This is a demonstration of the uh, hybrid transaxle of a second generation Toyota Prius. Uh, the second generation Prius uh, was the model years 2004 through 2009. Uh, the transaxle has several parts in it uh, and what makes it most unique is that it uses two electric motors. We have motor generator number two which drives the wheels and motor generator number one, which is both the starter motor for the engine and the uh, generator to replace the uh, alternator uh, on the vehicle. Uh, these electric motors are uh, made of very powerful uh, magnets. Uh, if we were to take this thing apart, like I've taken this one apart, um, if we pull the cap off of it, you can see that there's these slots uh, in the laminated uh, iron there where there are some very powerful uh, magnets uh, with north and south poles that fit down in to each of these uh, slots and uh, the magnetic field produced by those permanent magnets uh, is repelled or attracted to the electric electromagnetic field created by this uh, stator assembly. This is very much like an alternator of, of any other vehicle. This would be the rotor spinning inside of the stator and it would generate power, three phase power, the AC power that goes uh, to the rectifier, is changed to DC and charges the high voltage battery. Well this acts just like that when this is spinning uh, when powered by the engine, but it can also be reversed to where we apply three phase power uh, to the stator windings and it forces the uh, electric motor, uh, MG1, uh, to rotate. MG2, that is connected uh, ultimately to the front tires, um, has a giant stator uh, like this, except of course much, uh, much larger. Now, um, the uh, Toyota uh, hybrid uh, system that uses these two electric motors in the Prius uh, is connected to a standard uh, planetary gear set and a, a, a standard planetary gear set uh, has a ring gear this is the ring gear right here sometimes it's called an internal gear sometimes it's called an annulus gear Toyota calls it a ring gear um, it will also have a sun gear uh, the sun gear, like the sun in our solar system, uh, will be in the center of our planetary gear set. And then we have a uh, planet carrier, um, also, that has four planet uh, pinion gears as uh, part of the drive for this vehicle. Now, a, a regular automatic transmission has at least one set of planetary gears, these three components, for each two forward uh, gears that the transmission has. So if it's a two-speed, the old two-speed transmissions, then it had one set of planetary gears. If it's a four-speed, it has two sets of these. If it's a six-speed, it has three. Eight-speed has four. Uh, well, the, the Toyota uh, hybrid transaxle that's in the Prius, and very similar in the Camry and the Highlander, is an electronic variable uh, ratio uh, transmission, a CVT, continuously variable transmission. As a matter of fact, they call it an ECVT for electronic continuously variable transmission. And what makes it continuously variable, even though we're using a, a planetary gear set, uh, is that unlike a standard uh, automatic transmission with a ring gear, planet carrier, and a sun gear, um, in those transmissions, we would hold one part, drive another part, and the third piece would be the responding component. And then for a different gear, we would hold another piece, turn another piece, and get a different gear ratio. Well, the, the Toyota uh, Prius transaxle doesn't uh, hold uh, anything solid of these three planetary gear sets. So what we have is motor generator one that starts the engine and acts as the generator actually connects to the sun gear of this planetary gear set. 
motor generator two, which drives the, the front tires, actually connects to the ring gear. So if the ring gear moves at all, motor generator two moves and it drives the, the wheels. Um, if uh, motor generator one moves at all, then it drives the sun gear of the planetary gear set. And then the planet carrier that has the, the pinion gears in it uh, is connected to the internal combustion engine. And I've got, let me scoot this over. The equivalent of a uh, torque damper. This replaces a torque converter. This automatic uh, continuously variable transmission has no torque converter, but we've got the flywheel, very similar to a manual transmission that bolts to the crankshaft. We have a pressure plate. There's a beveled pressure plate that um, is going to keep constant pressure on the uh, clutch disc, and this clutch disc is always applied. It's uh, engine driven and it drives the planet gears. As a matter of fact, this planet uh, carrier splines right in and if the engine rotates at all, so does the, the planet carrier. So once again, we've got the, the, the planet carrier that's connected to the engine. We've got the sun gear that's connected to motor generator one, and we've got the ring gear that's connected to motor generator uh, number two. So now I'm gonna get this uh, flywheel out of the way. And let's put this uh, assembly together and see if we can figure out how we get forward and uh, reverse uh, gear ratios. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, motor generator number two right here and we're going to connect the planet carrier to it just like that uh, we're going to take the sun gear with motor generator number one connected to it and slide it into place and then there's an oil pump, there's a little miniature oil pump in this transaxle that's driven off the planet uh, carrier and I'm going to slide that into this other side so that we've got everything lined up just like it is uh, in the transaxle. Motor generator 2 connected to the ring gear that drives the vehicle. Um, these little lugs right here connect to a drive gear of a chain that goes to the final drive. We've got the motor generator one that hooks to the sun gear, and then we've got the planet carrier that connects uh, to the engine. Now I'm gonna attempt to set this up in these uh, B blocks here. It's very heavy. And then I'm going to bring the uh, clutch disc, the damper disc from the engine uh, over here and connect it to the planet carrier. So what we've got is the clutch disc represents the engine. We've got motor generator one, that's our starter and our alternator. And we have motor generator two that drives the, the vehicle down the road. So, um, with the, let's go through the different modes of operation. With the vehicle uh, stopped, um, motor generator two is always gonna turn the same speed as the tire. So if the vehicle stopped, motor generator two is stopped. If our high voltage battery um, is low on charge and we need to uh, charge it up, then we can turn motor generator one. Notice as I turn, Motor generator one, it turns the engine. We've got the disc for the engine. It will start the engine. And then as the engine starts and continues to run, notice that the engine turns motor generator one and makes it be a uh, generator, an alternator. 
Okay, so that will charge the, the battery. Uh, we're going to take the AC voltage uh, created by motor generator one, convert it to DC, uh, and send it back to our uh, 201 uh, volt battery. Now the engine can start and stop as is necessary to charge the battery without motor generator two doing anything. Now let's say the engine is off and we want to start driving down the road. If the engine is off, then motor generator one is stopped, motor generator two is stopped, and as we start to drive down the road, I'm going to hold the engine from turning, uh, motor generator two is going to start to rotate because we're going to apply a magnetic field, electromagnetic field to its field coil and make it start to turn. So notice as we start to turn motor generator two, that forces motor generator one to spin in the opposite direction. Uh, at this time, as you're driving on electric motor power only, motor generator one, uh, even though it could act as an alternator at this point, uh, they turn the charge rate way down to where it doesn't charge uh, very much at all. And we're just running on uh, electric power. We're taking the DC voltage from the battery, we're converting it to AC and turning motor generator number two. Now, uh, we reach a point where uh, we've reached a vehicle speed that to run any faster on motor generator two's power, if we rotate this any faster, we're really gonna over rev motor generator number one because it's, it's actually a 2.6 to one gear ratio. Uh, for every one turn of this, we're gonna get 2.6 turns of the generator. And it turns out that around 37 to 40 miles an hour, uh, motor generator two uh, reaches a speed where motor generator one is spinning too fast uh, to spin any faster. It's, it's limited at 6,500 RPM. So at that point, uh, with motor generator two spinning and motor generator one uh, spinning, uh, what we do is we slow down with electromagnetic field motor generator one and watch what that does to the engine. As we start to slow down motor generator one, we still allow it to spin backwards, but notice now the engine is turning, crankshaft of the engine is turning and the engine will start. So now the engine is turning uh, clockwise just as the um, motor generator two driving the vehicle is and we're driving down the road as we drive down the road if the engine speed and motor generator two speed were the same like they are now motor generator one also spins the same speed but typically the engine's going to spin a little faster than motor generator two and so motor generator two spins faster becomes a, a charging uh, unit a generator and as the engine is running, it forces motor generator one to become a generator. That feeds power back to the battery. It can also feed it to gen motor generator two uh, through our ele electronics to continue driving the vehicle at higher speeds. So at the higher speeds, we still have motor generator two uh, rotating. We have motor generator uh, one rotating, but only because uh, the engine is spinning it uh, at a faster speed and, and being a generator. Now, um, that's, uh, as we're driving down the road, uh, we still have motor generator two uh, propelling the vehicle. The engine is assisting in the propulsion, but I want you to notice that the engine is not connected to motor generator two. There, there is no direct mechanical connection. So at no time does the engine all by itself propel the vehicle. It can only assist uh, motor generator two in propelling the vehicle. And by doing that, it causes motor generator one uh, to become a uh, generator or alternator as, as we like to call it sometimes. Uh, now, if we uh, come to a complete stop and we want to uh, back up, then uh, what we do is uh, with the, we can do it two ways. We can stop the engine, which holds the planet carrier from rotating, and we can turn motor generator one, use it as an electric motor, and notice that causes motor generator two to spin in the reverse direction, and that backs us up. But if the engine needs to be running, uh, we can still uh, have the engine run, but we'd have to spin motor generator one much faster to still get reversed.